You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul, and you're listening to another epic episode of Ask Drone You. Indeed, and my name is Rob, and in fact, you're listening to episode 748. So thank you for hanging out with us for all these episodes. Glad that you are with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Just got another review. Really do appreciate that. It's awesome when we get those reviews. I'm going to actually go ahead and pull that up while you continue to tell us what we're going to be talking about in this show. But again, thank you very much. If you have a second to leave us a review on iTunes, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, It really does help other people find our show. Also, if you want to share the show, like yesterday's crazy bombshell, uh, then go ahead and just do that. That really helps us out. But anyway, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you and bless you, Paul. Excuse me. That was a big one. Anyways. Oh, you probably saw that fly across the screen if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Bring out the uh, disinfectant. Yes. Anyways, we are going to talk a little bit about what does the FAA have up its sleeve in terms of what this person terms common sense changes to the regulations? And uh, I think they're probably always trying to think in a common sense way and trying to keep the airspace safe at the same time, trying to mix the two and, and create an environment that we can all fly in. Um, yeah, effectively, safely, and uh, I'll just get along in the airspace, basically. You know, I think it's going to be just fine in all honesty. But anyway, guys, um, today's show is brought to you by our friends at the Drone U community who are utilizing our landing pads at the last Phoenix training. If you're interested in a training yourself, check out our Facebook page as we did just announce another training that's coming up in Houston, Texas, where we will be doing a fun little mapping course in Houston. Um, It's on our Facebook page. I can give you the URL right now, but it's going to be a crazy long one. So just check out our Facebook page. It's the second most recent post that's on there. Um, And it's all about essentially a Houston-based mapping course. It's going to talk about a lot of fun stuff. In fact, one of the topics for the upcoming shows will be covered in that class. Very excited about that. Um, Also, very special thank you to our friends at Energin because... We constantly are using the Energins all the time in our trainings to train Phantom 4 batteries with the A40. Get a discount on yours if you go to myenergin.com forward slash shop and use discount code DroneUA40. Let's hear the question. Hi, this is Tim in Phoenix, and I had a question about common sense when flying your drone and what the FAA looks at. Now, I was at a soccer field today to fly my Mavic Pro. And there was no one out there. It was a very secluded soccer field. It was outside of the five-mile radius of any airports. And I had checked the park signs to make sure that there were no restrictions on drones or planes or any of that type of thing. I got all set up to fly and started flying. And a Class E airspace restriction popped up on my DJI app and asked me if I had approval to fly and if I accepted legal responsibility to fly there. Now, I really just wanted to play with the sports mode on the DJI Mavic and uh, go at a low level. So I was only planning on flying at a low altitude. In fact, for the the short time that I was able to fly, I was only at four feet high. And I'm a six foot two individual. So I guess the question for me is, moving forward, is the FAA looking at common sense items such as, you know, if you're flying under 10 feet or 25 feet or whatever the case may be, that you're really not impeding on any airspace. You know, obviously I want to do what's right for the community and and make sure that I'm following the proper rules, but are there some common sense items that are being looked at by the FAA as they continue to change and adapt their current regulations? Anyway, I, I love listening to the podcast. I appreciate you listening to my question and hope that uh, I get an answer. Thanks again. All right. Thank you for the question, Tim. Appreciate that. And if you have a question, guys, go to askdroneu.com. And today we're going to try to keep it on the rails, Paul. 
Yeah, but I do want to read that review. Uh, someone said, this podcast is great for noobs and pros. There's always something to learn, so thank you. Now, I will say, this podcast question comes at a good time, as we were just in Phoenix ourselves, doing a little training, a little flying, a little obstacle course exercises. It was a, it was a fun time. Anyway, added a link in the show notes that actually is linked to Rob's extremely loud volume on his computer. But, uh, I'm just kidding, it's actually a link to the radio-controlled aircraft parks in Phoenix, as Phoenix has controlled where you can take off and land on their land, other than open space. Um, and there's a list of parks, Cody, Coyote, I just said Cody, Coyote Cody. Basin Park, Desert Foothills Park, Dynamite Park, El Prado Park, Esteban Park, Eastern Quadrant, Grover's Basin Park, Bravo, Mountain View 2 Park, be careful because there's another Mountain View Park, and Werner's Field Park. But where you can fly is also really, really vague um, because sometimes they say things like open space south of ball field. Determining ball field sometimes be uh, quite difficult. <laughs> Just look for the backstop. True. Although an avid Astro New listener told us they recently had a lawsuit with the uh, city of Phoenix Parks on where they could fly and where they couldn't fly. I haven't seen that yet, what it entails, what it's about. Supposedly the they yard. won the lawsuit, right? Isn't they that what he said? did supposedly win the lawsuit. So uh, we're really excited to see that. But as far as flying in Phoenix Parks, there are certain parks that you can fly in. Now, remember, if you're flying from your house, as long as you are not in uh, restricted airspace, if you're flying commercially, that is, um, then uh, you could take off and land all day long. Um, now, that being said, if you're flying under Part 101, so if this was for a hobby, which it kind of sounds like it sounded was. Sounded like it was, yeah. Um, y you don't have to really worry about uh, Class E airspace. Um, but by the way, recently a drone U student, oh, man, I backed out of it uh, like a dummy. Uh, recently, a um, drone U student, Mr. Chuck, was told... By the FAA, dear Part 107 applicant, it has been determined that Part 107 authorizations are not required for surface E extensions to class Charlie and Delta airspace, but Part 107 is still required for activity at surface E airports. Um, so essentially what that means is if you have a class Delta airport and it's in the early morning or late at night, they turn into class E, I believe, um, and you would still need a requirement to fly there. Now, if you're outside of KPHX in a Class E extension, then you do not need special permission to fly in that area. So when these warnings come up, it's really important to be educated. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, it's really important to be educated about airspace classifications and what applies to you, especially if you're flying Part 101 versus Part 107, as that does make a very big difference. So Part 101, as long as you call the tower and you're following a community-based organization's guidelines, then you are good to fly. So. Right. so in terms of his specific question about the FAA coming up with common sense regulations and so forth, it sounds as though, I mean, it, that is kind of what they're trying to do with all these different True. levels and so forth, right? True. So is there probably, is there going to be anything that sort of designates, he mentioned 10 feet and below? Probably not. I don't think they're going to get into that I don't kind of so. minutia. I don't think so either. Um, in addition, that has been, thank you for bringing that up, um, that has been a case of contention as people have sued the FAA for what is quote unquote navigable airspace. Mm -hmm. Because like if you're flying below the tree lines, other air traffic can't even fly there. So is it really navigable airspace? Just like how flying underneath a roof isn't in the FAA's jurisdiction. Um, you know, the surface up is airspace, but right. there has been this whole debate about navigable airspace. I am not going to make an opinion statement on navigable airspace. Um, under Part 101, he was perfectly okay to fly, and that's that. So right. I'm yeah. not going to get into minutia here. I'm not going to give my opinion on navigable airspace because I'm not a lawyer. Well, and it, and it wouldn't matter. It would be just that, an opinion. That, yes. I mean, it, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> that sounded bad. Your opinion does no, no, matter, no. Paul. It's okay <laughs> because there's a very famous book that says opinions – are the cheapest commodity in the world, and everyone has one. That's probably true. Everyone has multiple. That's true. Many, and like to share them sometimes, yeah, overly share them. Um, but anyway, another little caveat about radio-controlled aircraft in Phoenix Parks. 
Um, I think it's really important that if you're over by Mountain View Park too, if you're flying over there, just remember, um, you know, don't fly over people. And I would say a message to anyone who works in Parks and Rec, if you're setting up where people can and cannot fly drones, um, just remember, don't put the park where you can fly right next to the parking lot because the chances are people are going to be flying over people's heads. I mean, that's the thing is that we were recently, you know, over at Mountain View Park too, mm -hmm. and we were trying to set up far away from the parking lot, less people, less chances for something happening, and yet still we are even park, Parks and Rec, the Rangers, and the Phoenix Police Department were extremely nice to us, and we really yes, appreciate it. They were great. We were able to stay where we, where we wanted to as we kind of explained what was going on. Um, but, you know, one of the things that you got to be really careful for if you're a regulator is creating realistic regulations. Otherwise, I think they're just going to get trampled on. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. If you put the flying area right next to the parking lot, I know all the AMA guys are going to yell at me because they're like, we like to have our engine, you know, available so we can plug our battery chargers in. But those mm. guys were flying over people the entire time. And it was just like, you're not supposed to be doing that, guys. So, you know, if you as a regulator can set up areas that make more sense as far as flying in general or just stay out of the mix as a whole, I think is probably a better idea. Just like how, you know, Albuquerque tried doing this and the backlash, because we're like an aviation kind of community. Right. The backlash was so big. It was like, oh, never mind. All the signs came down. They did. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know what? I'm glad they listened. Yeah. Right. So they... They listened probably inappropriately to begin with without really thinking it through by putting the signs well, up. <clears throat> the reason that they said was just ridiculous. So For putting the signs up? Uh-huh, yeah. And they put signs yeah. up where they had already deemed it was an AMA field. You can fly there. So it's kind of <laughs> contradictory. That's not confusing at all. Yeah. Anyway. Huh. Um, so that was my special note to Parks and Recs regulators. Um, you know, be sensible about where you do this. Remember, guys, cities cannot control the airspace that you fly in. It is the Federal Aviation Administration. But they can control where you take off and land from. So if you're on private property, they can't say anything. Um, if you're on public property, it's a whole other story. So just just remember that. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for us, uh, for us today. I don't want to go on a rant as uh, someone has commented that Sometimes you have to really search for the useful information. That's not the goal of this podcast. We just like to have a little fun. Yes, so, forgive us. Forgive us for trying to entertain <laughs> you. Um, but we understand. We want it to be mostly useful information. Just mostly. Anyway, but that is going to do it for us today, guys. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.